issue four, uh, the first charge uh, that you have is first degree murder. Uh, the second charge you have is attempted murder. Uh, you have been detained at this point of 56 days. Your current bond is uh, $1 million. You recently turned 15 uh, this past month. Uh, the same thing is true here uh, in analyzing the, uh, the, uh, the circumstances for the trade. Uh, she is uh, 15 years old. Uh, her mental maturity, a physical uh, maturity, a present mental state, no, I've heard no uh, adverse information concerning that at this point, although I do note that it has been brought to the attention of the court that uh, you have excellent academic record uh, which is uh, which is good uh, but I've had nothing uh, negative up to, to, to today which we have more information presented today the uh, other criteria of the nature and circumstances of the alleged offense obviously a murder charge and attempted murder charge are extremely violent charges uh, and they are held in the most serious uh, of circumstances here uh, there are no prior delinquent acts uh, by Ms. Gregg and we do have the ability to Sight and sound separate her from the uh, adult prisoners uh, in the uh, detention facility. Uh, I do note uh, that typically we try to house uh, two people in a cell at this particular point, but we have no other juvenile females at this point in the street. So, regretfully, you're by yourself at this particular point. But in the interest of justice, I believe uh, it's met by keeping uh, Ms. Gregg pending her bonding out or change of custody. Uh, held in the adult facility, as I mentioned, are different from uh, the, the separate from the uh, adult prisoners here. All right, Ms. Green, we're going to talk about some more of your cases, so we can take the front row uh, back. And Ms. Greg, if you want to come down and sit next to your lawyer. The shooting death at the home of a Mississippi high school math teacher and mother already appeared to be a particularly grisly case as soon as the victim's 14-year-old daughter was identified as the suspect and charged as an adult with murder. But a Rankin County Sheriff's Office investigator has since testified that Carly Gregg shot 40-year-old Ashley Smilly twice in the face, invited a friend over to show off the victim's body by claiming there was an emergency, played with her dogs in the meanwhile, and then told that friend there were two for the head, one for the chest, waiting for Greg's stepfather, too. Okay. All right, we're on the record uh, in 24-15875, uh, State of Mississippi versus Carly, Matt, Carly Madison Gregg. Uh, we have separate uh, several things that we need to discuss uh, concerning Ms. Gregg today, uh, and we have to cover with Ms. Gregg today. Uh, and uh, you're Mr. Coleman. Uh, Sam, Mr. Coleman, you can be a minute. Uh, first thing I want to cover, and you can speak to me from, from seating right there, Ms. Coleman, is uh, MEC 49 and MEC 50 as it relates to Ms. Gregg or the orders for mental evaluation. Have you had a chance to review those? Um, no, sir, we have not. But um, our retained medical doctors have informed us that they are unable to complete their mental evaluation and testing until Carly is released from jail. So, All right, well, that's not going to be necessarily true. All right, so here's the way we can do that. Uh, and I understand that that's one of the concerns, uh, and it's certainly a concern, but we got two different things going on here. So I'm going to address what you said first, then we'll come back to Mississippi State Hospital. She can be either evaluated in jail, or if your psychiatrist or psychologist believes that she needs to come to his office, she can be transported by the court staff and deputy to his office for any evaluations. So her, her uh, detention or incarceration will not prevent her from being evaluated. So you, if, if you're sincere about wanting her for, uh, evaluated by someone of your own choosing, then you need to make yourself uh, available for that because, uh, as they say, uh, the dog will hunt going forward because we will accommodate her being evaluated by your, uh, by your expert. Now, the second thing is uh, the orders MEC 49 and 50 uh, I want you to go back and look at those uh, today. 
because uh, both of those, uh, MEC 49 is the order for mental evaluation for competence to stay at trial. And the second page of that order uh, specifically requires the defense counsel to, uh, to promptly prepare and furnish to the examining mental health expert the following. Now, I understand he had a chance, I understand he don't have a report, but there are other things there that you can provide to the mental health facility uh, at Mississippi State Hospital. Uh, and then once you do that, you're required by order of the court uh, to file a certificate of comp compliance that you have done it. So both uh, MEC 49 for the competence to stand trial and MEC 50, the supplemental order for a analysis, both require, uh, have affirmative requirements for the defense counsel to uh, provide information to the state hospital and to file certificates of completion. Uh, the state hospital can't begin until you've done that. The state of Mississippi has already done that. They sent their material there, they filed their certificate. Uh, is there any reason, uh, Mr. Coleman, that uh, you can't get this filed in the next 24 hours? Um, I, I would have to speak to uh, Carly's um, medical examiner, Your Honor. I, I'm not aware of their schedules. Uh, I'm not aware of their availability. Certainly, I'm willing to reach out to them and see if we can expedite that process. All right. My, my patience is going to be a little thin, Mr. Coleman. The, the order says 10 business days from the date of the order. Uh, April the 18th was when the order was entered. So we, we ran we're, we run out of 10 business days uh, since the entry of the order. Uh, and this is obviously a most serious uh, event. And while you certainly have a right to have uh, a mental evaluation done, the state of Mississippi has a right to have a state hospital perform one as well. Uh, and I, I'm not going to allow you to obstruct that process. I'm not accusing you of obstructing. I'm just telling you right now we have non-compliance with my orders, all right? Uh, so, um, you know, today is Tuesday. I'm going to review this next Tuesday, uh, Mr. Coleman, uh, and I expect when I pull up MEC to find certificate of compliance for both MEC 49 and MEC 50 uh, that says that to the best of your ability, you have complied with the orders of this court. Now, if we have not, if you have not provided those uh, by next Tuesday, then I'm just going to be dead up honest with you and we'll have a show calls here. Uh, I'm serious as I can be about this. This is a serious matter. I need your cooperation. I will have your cooperation, whether you, you cooperate or I have to make you. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just trying to tell you how serious this is, okay? I'm sure you are. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. All right. Uh, now, then, let's move on to uh, the two motions uh, that the defense has filed. Uh, we got two items on the agenda of the docket today. Uh, one is MEC 53, which is a motion to reduce bond uh, filed by the defendants on uh, this past Friday, May 10. That was MEC 53 and a motion to exclude the public uh, and the media, which is MEC uh, 56. Uh, according to the Mississippi Rules of Criminal Procedure 1.3D, uh, it states that a written motion and notice of the hearing thereof shall be served no later than five days before the time fixed for the hearing. The notice of hearing for both motions was today. The motion to exclude the public and the media was filed yesterday, the 13th. We clearly are not within the, uh, you know, we're, we, we've not had the requisite time here. Mississippi Rules of Criminal Procedure 1.3a specify that when the period of time prescribed or allowed is less than seven days, which is what we have here, that Saturdays and Sundays don't count. So if I, and we don't count the day of the filing, but if I did count the day of the filing for MEC 53, which is the motion to reduce bond, uh, then we've only got three days. If I count the day of filing yesterday, which I'm not supposed to, but if I did for the motion to uh, deny access to the public or the press, uh, then I've got one day on that clock. So, all that to be said, uh, Mr. Coleman, uh, the rules of criminal procedure have not been followed as it relates to notice on those two motions. Uh, that can be cured uh, by the state of Mississippi if they choose to waive time in this event. Uh, Mr. Berry, what's the state's position on these two motions? Your Honor, the, um, as the motion to reduce bond, I spoke to Mr. Coleman beforehand and, and tried to talk to him about that. And uh, the state does not choose to waive that at this point. And generally, we choose not to waive that at this point. It's a motion to exclude the media and the public. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we, we defer to the court on that you know, uh, as to this motion. Okay. 
Well, uh, and I, I tell people all the time that uh, it's a lot easier for me if I just follow the rules. Uh, and they're, you know, they're like everything else, uh, we have a lot of rules as it relates to criminal process. Uh, and I've just been quoting the rules of criminal procedure as they relate to motions and, and notice. Uh, but uh, also, there is a set of rules, oddly enough, for the Mississippi rules for electronic and photographic coverage of judicial, judicial proceedings. Uh, which our media is uh, does a good job of complying with. Uh, I've not had any objections or any uh, complaints uh, regarding the, uh, the media whose willingness or want to be here. Uh, they do provide their notice as they are required. Uh, I honestly believe that uh, the public has a right to know this is a public forum. Uh, these are public courtrooms, uh, barring specific uh, problems, uh, and I'm not ruling on the motion because the state's not waiving time, so it's not properly before me, but I just say that, uh, I say all that to say that the rules for electronic and photographic, uh, photographic coverage of judicial proceedings, Rule 7, uh, which uh, the defense has complied with, says uh, any party may object to electronic coverage by written motion, which the defense has done, uh, which was filed yesterday, and it says such motion shall be filed no later than 15 days prior to commencement of the judicial proceedings unless good cause exists to shorten the time for filing. So what we'll do, uh, I, know there are, I know the media is an interested party here uh, as well uh, who would probably object to uh, any closing of any judicial proceedings as it relates to Ms. Gray. Uh, so uh, the rule requires at least 15 days out there uh, so we can do it, Mr. Uh, Coleman, however you want to. You have two motions. My, my, the motion for to exclude the media, I, I won't hear until two weeks from today. I want to get with 15 days and get what the rule says. The second one, uh, the, uh, the motion to reduce bond, uh, you will certainly have met that time requirement by next Tuesday. So it really, if you want to hear it, the motion to deny bond next Tuesday, it, it kind of renders your other motion moot because we will not have heard the motion for to exclude the public and the media. Now, if you want to be to hear that one first, then I'm going to need to hear both of them two weeks from today. So, what's your choice? Understood. Um, Your Honor, we, you know, we believe that the media should be excluded. We believe that Carl is being prejudiced by the media. Uh, we believe that it's in her best interest to um, exclude them first, potentially, and then have our, our bond here. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but one more thing, Your Honor, you know, I understand that the rules are the rules, but Carly is also entitled to a bond hearing every 30 days, correct? Well, she's in, she's had one, uh, and she's entitled to bond, you know, it, it, and I'm, I'm going to be pretty open about those things, you know, yes. uh, you know, whether something is, and my first thought was when I saw your motion file, my first thought was what's different, you know, and they, it won't do any good to come back, and I know you didn't argue the previous previous uh, motion, but right. but if there's not any new information, we're kind of wasting everybody's time. So I assume that when you bring forth a new motion, and I'm not going to restrict you, Mr. Cohen, on, uh, I mean, we'll hear, we hear it as many times as you want to present them if we have new information. Now, I'm not going, we're not going to beat the dead horse if, you know, it's nothing new has happened since the last hearing. But I, I'm open, the bottom line is I'm open to hearing any motion you have. So I hear what you're saying on the the motion to exclude the media press uh, first. So what we'll do is we'll continue both these motions to two weeks from today. We will hear the motion on the, to exclude the media and the press first, uh, then I will rule on that, and then we'll deal with the motion to deny bond. I will tell you, though, uh, Mr. Coleman, that the default position, of course, by the Supreme Court is to favor the media and the public. That's, that's the default position. Uh, momentum uh, begins against you um, in, in that event, so uh, you'll need to make a compelling argument uh, for the court to determine that the public and or the media is not uh, entitled to participate or to observe the proceedings as they relate to this grade. So anything else uh, at this point, uh, Mr. Cole? No, Your Honor. Mr. Barry. No, sir, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, Mr. Coleman is, uh, I, I know, uh, I want to point out a couple things for their, uh, just uh, so everybody knows. I know, I know the case with Ms. Greg has generated a lot of attention, uh, but I want to, and I know being a juvenile creates more attention uh, here, uh, and I am sensitive, I am sensitive to that. Uh, and I know the last time I was, we were here, the family had an opportunity to visit with Ms. Greg 
Uh, I'll extend the same opportunity again, family. Uh, if y'all want to visit with Miss Greg, we'll do the same thing we did last time. Uh, just go back to the jail and they will accommodate you there. Uh, it's also my understanding that Miss Greg has access to an electronic pad uh, that she's able to make phone calls with, FaceTime with. Uh, there are no restrictions on her use of that pad. Uh, I understand that they have a time limit of 15 minutes per per call, but I understand that once once you time out on that call, she can place an, an, an immediate call right behind that. Uh, so uh, it's my understanding that she's either, as of yesterday, I think she had used that pad 36 or 37 times and had one physical visit. So I am sensitive to what's going on here, but I do know that we try to accommodate her uh, and the other juveniles with uh, access to these uh, communication pads. Uh, so that she can communicate with her family. All that being said, uh, that uh, we'll go ahead and uh, and pause this hearing now. We'll take a short recess to let me swap out uh, defendants here for a moment and return Ms. Greg and family. If y'all want to make your way back to the jail, then you'll be able to go visit with uh, Ms. Greg. All right, we'll be in recess for about 10 minutes.